philosopher Roland Barthes famously announced the death of the author, whereby arguing that the author no longer had complete control over a work's meaning. Perhaps the most famous incident where detaching the text from the author seemed absurd relates to Paul de Man. Paul de Man worked in the deconstructive movement. In 1987, the New York Times, under the title Yale Scholars' Articles Found in Nazi Paper, published an article that looked to 170 articles written by the man between 1940 and 1942 that contained anti-Semitic and pro-Nazi sentiments. What are we to make of this? Were they the overzealous mistaken ideas of a young man? The problem is that if we accept the death of the author, we are unable to hold the man accountable. Sean Burke, in his work, The Death and Return of the Author, on page 5, says, On this issue, theory seems to abandon or suspend the idea that the author is a mere fiction or trace of language. For if authorship were indeed a textual illusion, there would be no charge to answer beyond that of reminding the world that in the reality of text, Paul de Man signs and signifies nothing. Yet, as Burke says, so much in itself confirms that, firstly, the signature Paul de Man is something greatly in excess of a textual effect, and secondly, his signature ties de Man ethically and existentially to the text he has written. De Man always denied that the writer's life should aid in any way the interpretation of his or her work. Some commentators, perhaps unfairly, even consider his denial of biography as an act of self-protection. Of course, if the man generally was contrite and regretted some of the things he had written, there must be a place for grace and forgiveness, but these are separate issues from that of accountability. Can we claim that the author the man of 1940 was the same the man of 1980 if we hold to the denial of biography and the death of the author? If you found this interesting, please check our YouTube channel out and also our website www.intentism.com. See you there.